In the first two videos, we have used the Smith chart to help design an impedance matching circuit for a simple dipole antenna. In this video, we will use the Smith chart to introduce the feed line and see how the feed line can be used to widen the matching bandwidth. Of all the amateur radio bands, the 80 meter band is best known as having antenna matching problems. This is because the frequency allocation is a large percentage of the central frequency. Specifically, in the United States, the 80 meter band allows for operation from 3.5 to 4.0 MHz. That's 500 kHz with a center frequency of 3.75 MHz. Let's explore this problem a little. As with the previous tutorial, we'll start with an antenna model from EasyNeck. Here is the model for a 128 foot long dipole, fed in the center, mounted 68 feet above ground. Need to get rid of my error message, set my center frequency. And let's go look at this SWR. Notice that the SWR below the 2 line is actually quite narrow. It's about 80, maybe 90 kilohertz wide. Using our previous techniques, we'll go ahead and match this circuit with an L network. and go back and look at the SWR. Notice that the SWR is now much wider. It goes from about 3.6 megahertz up to 3.9 megahertz, about 300 kilohertz wide. We'll come back to this issue in a moment. Nearly every antenna installation includes the use of a feed line. Most amateurs use coax cables for their feed lines because they are inexpensive and easy to install. We have the option of installing the feed line either before the matching network or after. An operator interested in minimizing the impact of antenna mismatches will place the matching LC network at the feed point of the antenna. In this case, we would place the coax between the LC network and the generator. Notice that the length of the coax has very little impact on the impedance, but there, there is a small amount. Let's change the length of the feed line, and you'll see the X moving around over here. This small effect is due to the losses of the feed line. We can see it a little more clearly if I set the losses very high. Watch closely what happens to the X as the length of the coax line is increased. And when the coax line reaches one half wavelength long, the X will return almost exactly to the center of the graph. It doesn't quite make it back to the center because there are some losses. If I set the losses to zero, that little circle would go away. This observation is consistent with the common wisdom that making the feed line one half wavelength long will minimize its impact. Let's go look at the SWR. The length of the coax can be modified by watching the SWR with this higher loss. As you can see, the coax has a significant impact, but largely this is because of the loss. Let me set the coax loss back to 0.5 and we'll see that a large part of it, this additional matching has gone away. Now while it's often considered best practice to place the matching L network at the feed point of the antenna, most radio installations do not do so. Instead, the L circuit is often implemented using what is called an antenna tuner or transmatch. This means that the feed line would be moved. Notice that moving the feed line does have an impact on the SWR. 
In fact, it seems to make it better. Unfortunately, this is because the feed line has some losses, and these losses are higher when the antenna and feed line are not matched. This can be verified by simply setting the loss to zero. Let's go back and look at the circuit using the Smith chart. And let's set the feed line losses to be somewhat better, worse than zero. The effect of this one half wave feed line is clearly visible. The feed line introduces a spiral pattern rather than a perfect circle. The spiral is because of the losses of the coax. It is interesting to look at the signals at each of the elements of the circuit, and as we've done before, this can be done by clicking on the sweep frequency button. As you can see here, the traces all have little loops in them, and that loop is introduced by the feed line. Let me set my SWR2 circle, and we're going to do a little more work. Notice that the size of these loops is smaller than the size of the SWR circle. Now, before proceeding, I'd like to point out that what follows is described in Chapter 9 of the ARRL Antenna Handbook. The title of that chapter is Broadband Antenna Matching. And as always, the following can be done mathematically, but we'll use the Smith chart and do it visually. To get started, I'm going to set the scan frequency lower and upper bound to reflect the amateur radio privileges of the 80 meter band, which are 3.5 to 4.0 megahertz. The goal now will be to move this red circle, or this red loop, to be inside the SWR 2 to 1 circle. In the Smith chart, we move things up generally by adding inductance, and we move things down by adding capacitance. Let's move this red circle up, this red loop up. set our half wavelength properly. As we can see here, we've managed to move the entire red loop up to inside the SWR circle. And we can take a look at that on the SWR plot and see, let's look at only the final answer, that the entire amateur radio band and 80 meters has been moved below the 2 to 1 SWR circle. Now, SimSmith assumes a 0.5 dB loss at 10 megahertz, which is roughly what one might expect from foam core RG8. RG8 is a fairly good coax. Let's look at what happens when we use a more typical coax, RG58, which has a loss of around 1.2 dB per 100 feet at 10 megahertz. You can see that the match has been changed, and if we go back and look at our Smith chart, we'll see, let's sweep the frequency, we'll see that our loop is now smaller and that it's moved up and out, and we can move it back down here. And place it inside the circle. We can look at the SWR, and we can see that now the entire thing is below 2.0, um, that makes it look like RG58 made things better, but in fact, as we remember, it's the losses of RG8 which made it look better. It's not really a better design. Still, if I set this coax back at 0.5, loss, I go back and look at my Smith chart, frequency sweep, 0.5, 
move this back up, look at my SWR. Again, where the entire band is below 2.0. This little exercise has taught us an interesting lesson. While the feed line may be engineered to be invisible, the Smith chart has shown that the feed line can be forced into doing double duty and can actually help widen the SWR matching bandwidth, even with very low loss coax. In this video, we used the Smith chart to impedance match a 50 ohm transmitter to a simple 80 meter dipole. We then added a 50 ohm coax feed line and placed the feed line between the matching circuit and the transmitter following what might be considered best practice. However, upon examination of the Smith chart, we found that moving the feed line could improve our matching bandwidth considerably. Fortunately, this improved configuration reflects the typical amateur radio installation. In other words, the typical amateur installation is, by most measures, a better configuration than what many would consider to be best practice. In the next video, we will use the Smith chart to develop an antenna model sufficient for amplifier and transmatch design and development.